Hello, everybody. I'm Nancy Bronstein. I am a FOF educator, and I don't have my, yeah, I do have my microphone on, so I'm off to a good start for 2022. And uh, today we're going to be talking about sewing and embroidery with fleece and minky fabric. But before we uh, launch into that, I'd like to say Happy New Year to all of you. I hope you all had a healthy and happy holiday season. Ours was especially uh, joyous because we had our first uh, grandchild with us for the very first holiday. And uh, of course, since I heard that I was going to have a grandchild, I've been all over Minky. So got lots of stuff to share with you. Um, and I'd also like to thank you for joining me for this hour. To It is a big compliment that you'll take an hour out of your day and spend it with me. And I do appreciate it. So what my plans are. Um, are that I am going to start out and I'm going to go over some tips, different supplies that are that it's nice to have when you sew with uh, particularly Minky and um, also show you some ideas and some different techniques and we're going to have a lot of fun. So um, you're probably wondering, well, does she live in a really cold climate? She's got a scarf around her neck, a winter scarf. Well, the reason why I'm wearing this is that it is a sample of a technique I'm going to be showing you, which is felting. Now, we have a felting kit that some of you may have used to felt wool to wool or uh, maybe wool to um, denim like this or, or roving or yarn. But my favorite technique to use with the felting kit is to felt fleece to fleece. And I'm going to see if I can give you a better viewpoint of the uh, what it ends up looking like. This snowflake, which doesn't go, doesn't show up really well on this camera, but you can see it's a very delicate effect, um, very soft. And then these little s snowflakes I added with white embroidery thread later, and I will go over that. Also, this scarf is an example of combining fleece with minky. Minky makes it very, very soft on the inside, and my husband loves it. In fact, he was a, a little bit pouty this morning because he couldn't wear it to work today that I needed it for today's Facebook Live, but he'll have it every other day from now on. So we're going to do that towards the end. First of all, I'm going to talk about uh, some tips because sewing, sewing with fleece is not all that much different from sewing with other um, knit fabrics. Um, you know, once you've sewn with knits, it's it's not terrible. You know, it's not too much different. Minky is is a little bit more challenging because it's very stretchy and it's a little bit slippery and you know wants to misbehave. So there are some techniques that make it a little bit easier. And then Minky also comes in different types. There's Minky that is um, uh, doesn't have much of a of um, uh, a nap to it. It's it's pretty um, um, soft, and the the fibers are not that long. But then there's minky that where it's it looks like uh, faux fur. So you know each one has its own challenges. And um, I thought I had yeah I do have a piece here I'm talking about. Isn't this pretty? This is uh, the the furry minky, and um, the the different types of minky. Um, are they're not all created equal. The minky that you will get at your neighborhood quilt store is probably better quality than you get at the big box store, just like quilting cotton. Uh, what I would say is if you're going to get your minky at the big box store, make sure that you read the label because some of it will say dry clean only. And that would be a real drag for a baby gift that the, the new mother would have to uh, dry clean that blanket that you gave her. It's just not really workable for, you know, a, a baby gift. And Minky is often used to make baby gifts, you know, to make blankets, um, make little jackets and hats and things like that because it's so soft and cuddly. So it's a great product to work with once you get familiar with it. So I'm going to start off by giving you some tips. So first of all, cutting it can be a little bit challenging. Um, it does stretch and it can um, be hard to get a straight edge. So I'm going to go over some um, tips that I, I have here. I'm going to change my camera view. Let's see, we're going to go over here. Yes. OK, so I have two pieces of minky that's fairly flat. It's not like this uh, furry minky. And when you're working with uh, 
your, your minky. The first thing to be aware of is the, the nap because you want, if this was say a strip quilt where you're gonna sew this piece to this piece, you wanna make sure that if this, if this is going against the nap that you would also want this to be going against the, the nap. You don't want to um, have them going different ways. So pay attention to the nap when you sew them together. Now, if this was a binding that you were doing where you're going to, as you would with a cotton quilt, sew the corners together across here, then you want the, the nap going the opposite way. So if, if this is smooth this way, and this is not smooth that way, this is the way we would want to place it on there so that when we went to, uh, to straighten this out for your binding, the, the nap is all going across the same way. So just make, just be aware when you put your binding together that you get, get it going the same direction. And uh, then as far as cutting, there are different ways to cut it. Um, I generally will use a rotary cutter if I'm doing, say, a quilt. Like if I'm doing something like this baby quilt that I made for my grandson, and I'll show you, it's, it's, got, it's got a uh, sort of um, ocean theme. And uh, you now I wanna show you the embroidery that I did, if I can get it in on the camera correctly. So on the corner, I've got my little crazy fish with his name and then, you know, the um, with the deep sea minky fabric going along with that. So if I were going to be making a quilt like this where I'm just sewing strips together and I want to cut my strips straight, I would probably just, I would use the um, rotary cutter. So this would be my tool of choice. If I'm going to be making something where I'm cutting little pieces, if I'm cutting little pieces of um, either fleece or minky to make uh, a soft toy, like I made this uh, toy for my grandson, and there are a lot of little pieces, like the, his hands are, you know, these little pieces and the ears are little. When you're doing these small pieces, then of course you want to use scissors or a craft knife. Um, I prefer to use scissors, and the scissors that I would prefer to use, whoops, wrong camera view, would be a pair that have a micro serrated edge. You know, have very, you want your scissors to be very sharp, and, you know, and you want to be able to get into small areas if you're making a soft toy. So you, having these, um, I don't know if you'd call these small scissors or medium-sized scissors, I think they're six inch. And having the micro serrated edge, they're very, very sharp and they're great for cutting very small pieces of minky or fleece. They're also really good for applique. So if you don't have a pair of scissors like this, you'd really like getting a pair. So if I were going to um, cut out, say, this uh, little hand piece of, um, of the, the soft toy, and I wanted to use some thicker minky, what I would actually do is instead of pinning it, I would lay it on my fabric, hold it there, maybe put a pattern weight on it, and I would trace around it with a Sharpie. The Sharpie is because then I can really see it and you're not, uh, it's outside of the seam allowance, so you're not gonna see the Sharpie anyway. So I would um, trace, the pattern piece and then I would cut it out with these really sharp scissors. <clears throat> then the other challenge with, um, let's see if there's actually anything else I want to say about cutting. I think that is about it. You know, by craft knife, what I mean is kind of like an X-Acto knife that Olfa makes a craft knife. And some people prefer to cut this um, furry minky with the craft knife. Um, I really prefer to use the smaller scissors for small pieces and then for strips to use the rotary cutter because that's what I'm used to using. Now, when you're going to sew these pieces together, it can be a bit challenging because things like to stretch and they like to shift. And um, it's, 
you if you're going to use pins which i would really definitely recommend because things shift so much the your pins that have a small head can get lost in the fur so you want to be sure to have something with a very large head like these flower head pins so that you you know you're not going to lose the pin in the fur at any point in time and i would for a long piece i would um pin it this way instead of the way we typically do with garment sewing because you want to um, hold these ends together i i just uh i'm a, a person that if the fabric's not going to behave i like to use a lot of pins and um, for something like this i would put the pins fairly close together with the point this way so that when i put it under the needle i can sew up to this point and then pull it out and then sew further. Now, if you're finding it especially challenging, you could put your pins in like so. I'm not gonna stick them in the fabric, but you get the idea. And you could actually do another row that's below your level of where your stitch line so that as you're sewing along up here, you still have these pieces, these pins on the second row holding your uh, pieces of minky together. <clears throat> and let's see what else I want to say. Generally, uh, when you're sewing minky, most of the patterns will, you'll have a half inch seam allowance, except for perhaps these little, you know, with, when you're doing a um, small thing like that um, stuffed animal. There might be a, you know, a smaller seam allowance, but generally it's about a half an inch. Um, when you set up your machine, you're probably going to want to increase the stitch length to a 3 or 3.5. And that's if you're using a straight stitch. Some people like to use a very narrow zigzag. And um, um, either way, it's personal preference. So let's see, we have a comment, a suggestion from Patricia. I put packing tape on both sides of my cutting line to prevent stretch and fur going everywhere. Yes, fur going everywhere is definitely an issue, which I should have mentioned when I was benching cutting. So some people will um, take their minky and they'll they'll cut it and they'll put it in the, into the uh, dryer with a wet washcloth to to have the all the little pieces of fur go into the um, lint trap. Um, I don't do that because I'm, I feel like my dryer is a little hard to get all the lint out and it's much easier to just vacuum after I'm done. You, you're just, you're going to have to vacuum. You know, if your vacuum's broken, you probably don't want to sew with Minky that day because you're going to get fuzz on your cutting table and it's going to blow probably onto the floor as well, but it's not a big deal. You just get your vacuum out and you vacuum it up. But Patricia has a great idea to put the um, packing tape or probably even um, painter's tape would work. And that way it could help to keep down the fluff. Because when you're cutting particularly stuff that this kind of minky where it's furry, there you, you make a cut and it's going to cut a little bit of this fur on the side. And you're going to see so you're going to have you're going to have uh, fluff. It's just it's it's just a part of working with Minky. Actually, it's not in the camera totally. Yeah, you see the fluff there. So you're going to have to get your vacuum cleaner out, and uh, but it's not a big deal. And it's just so nice and soft. And I I have developed a love for Minky. Okay, so let's see what are other um, tips that I have here. Um, you may want to use a non-stick foot. That's a uh, personal preference as well. That's the foot that, <clears throat> it's a white um, plastic foot that is good for sewing on leather and vinyl. If you're, if you're feeling like things are kind of dragging, that might help. Um, also, you're probably always going to want to use your IDT, your integrated walking foot that you pull down because that's going to keep the, the two layers together. Um, you may need to change your presser foot pressure. And when you're sewing with Minky, you may need to lower the pressure, which means giving it a lower number. And I find that when I'm sewing with 
many layers of fleece where the, the seam is very fat. Um, like when I was making these little uh, hands uh, in the ears, I actually felt like I had better control by jacking up the presser foot pressure. It would smash down the fleece a bit, and uh, that's a technical term, smash it down. And uh, then it would it just seemed to stitch better. So I'm going to show you how you would go about changing your presser foot pressure, at least on the icon um, that I have here. But you can change your presser foot pressure on your Ambition or on your uh, 4.5. You know there is a spot in the settings. It's either in sewing settings or machine settings on on those uh, lines of machines. But I'll show you on the um, creative icon in case you don't know where to change your presser foot pressure. And so you would go into sewing, and then you have to go into settings, which you go and get into settings by touching um, this uh, sprocket icon. And then we go into machine settings, I believe. Or maybe, no, nope. let's go back to sewing settings. Here we go. So sewing settings, you scroll up. Here's presser foot pressure. And um, you would um, increase it for fleece. At least that's what I do. Maybe decrease it for minky. And if you forget which direction you need to go, you can always touch the question mark and then touch the icon to get information. And it will tell you that to decrease the pressure, touch positive to increase and negative to decrease the pressure. So then, then it's clear which direction you're going. So that's how you would change the presser, it's sort of hard to say, the presser foot pressure. <clears throat> and, Let's see what else I want to say here. I think that's on, good on settings. Then as far as supplies, when you're setting up your machine and, and your work area, I would say you definitely want to use a stretch needle. I use a 9014. I would prefer uh, to always use polyester thread because this is stretchy fabric, and I think cotton would have more of a tendency to pop. Um, so polyester, and it is a polyester fabric. Uh, another tool that's very important is a stiletto of some kind. You know, it's, it's got kind of a, a needle, a, a stiff needle point on it. And as you're manipulating all those fibers underneath the foot, there's inevitably going to be some that will misbehave and not be where you want them to be. And you can make them behave by pressing down with the stiletto and you won't be in any danger of sewing your fingers. So the stiletto is, um, I, like, I like to have one for almost all types of sewing, but especially fleece and minky. I, if I didn't have it next to the machine, I'd get up and get it wherever it had drifted off to because it's that important. And um, I talked to you about the big head pins. And also, the other, one thing I didn't say about the Sharpie is that um, I kind of alluded to it in that, of course, you would, when you do the Sharpie to mark your fabric, you're going to want to mark on the wrong side, you know, not on the right side. And um, I would use, say, a black Sharpie on this gray uh, fabric. And then if I had black minky, which I don't, but I've got this black piece of fabric, there are silver Sharpies that you can use, and you can definitely see that on the silver, I mean, the silver Sharpie on the black minky. And let's see what else you might need. I think that's it. The only other supply I would say that you definitely want to have on hand is that if you are going to be doing embroidery or uh, uh, embroidery on uh, fleece or minky, that you're going to want to have some sort of water-soluble stabilizer as a topper. You'll have some kind of stabilizer underneath, and you will want water-soluble on top so that it will um, pull this, the, so the stitches don't um, disappear into the fibers, on, particularly on the minky, but also the fleece. It looks better if you do use the water-soluble. And after you're done embroidering, you just trim really close to your embroidery, and you may not even need to wash it out. You can take a wet Q-tip 
and just sort of rub the edges of the design. And then you will have, um, it, it will be melting away as you're doing it. So you may get away without even having to wash it after uh, embroidering it, and at least washing it in order to get rid of the stabilizer. Okay, so um, I was gonna also give you a few tips for when you're, you're if you're gonna use these fabrics to make um, a stuffed animal like this. Um, most of these animals you're going to stuff with polyfill, you know, that the, um, it's a, a product that comes in a bag and that you, you can make pillows out of it and stuff toys. Um, Meredith says, Sharpie doesn't bleed through. No, Sharpie doesn't bleed through. And even if it did, that's gonna be on the edge of the seam allowance. So you're not gonna see it anyway, but the fabric is so thick that, you know, you're not, you've got this Sharpie on this side and you don't see anything on this side. So, and it would be in the seam anyway. The problem with using most um, markers that are you know, like pencil markers or chalk markers is that as you're marking, it's the fabric is stretching. So um, the, the Sharpie will ride across the fabric and it will not um, stretch it as, as it's going across and it, it definitely, you can definitely see it. So that's why I like to use a Sharpie. Generally, I do not use Sharpies as fabric markers, except with minky and, and fleece, especially minky. Okay, so I was saying about uh, when you're making stuffed animals, um, a lot of times, um, or actually I was gonna say, talking about the polyfill. Now, they also have another product called um, Royal Silk or Silk Fill. Um, it has silk in the name, and that is much softer. So if you're looking for an ultra soft stu uh, stuffing for a stuffed animal, then you might want to go up a step in product level to the royal silk or the silk polyfill because it's much softer and it se tends to clump less. Um, this, this is just regular um, polyfill. I've also made stuffed animals out of um, batting that I cut up really, really uh, I went crazy with the rotary cutter to, to shred it basically. Because I, when I quilt on my long arm, I like to have a um, border of the batting on the sides just and the extra fabric on the sides just in case I want to test out stitches and just that's the way I like to that's the way I roll when I'm doing my long arming so I generally have these strips of batting at the end and I shred them and I can use them to make pillows and also to stuff these animals so the other thing I was going to mention about stuffing these guys is that like this guy, you want him to stand up, which I got to get in the camera the right way. I'm holding him up with one hand. He will stand up and he's standing up because inside there's kind of a um, like a bean bag almost. And you can fill that bean bag with poly pellets, which are made by the same company that makes polyfill. Or you can use what you have on hand like I did. And I'll show you what I did. I get the right camera angle. Nope, that's not it. This is the one I want. So I used large uh, washers. I have these washers. I have a bunch of these large washers hanging around to use as pattern weights. And I didn't have any poly pellets. So I put a layer of uh, inner foam. I sewed that to the base of that um, bean bag that's supposed to hold the toy up. And then I hand stitched the washers to the inner foam. And then there's another layer of that orange fleece that goes on top and then it gets slipped inside the, the base of the stuffed animal. So, you know, if you don't have poly pellets, you know, the, the um, um, washers that you can get at your local hardware store work fine. You know, he's, he stands up just fine all on his own. <clears throat> and let me get my camera right here. Okay, so now let's talk about doing um, some embroidery with fleece and with minky. So I started the, the class talking about doing felting on minky, um, felting on fleece, felting fleece 
into the fleece. And I want to explain a little bit more what I mean by that. It sort of sounds like, I don't know, gobbledygook to people who've never felt it. Um, originally, before there were these felting kits or felting machines, the way felting was done is you take a piece of um, wool and put some roving on the top. And with a punch, you punch it um, a zillion times until the, the two piece, the roving and the fabric become one. And it gives it this really nice, soft design. But you basically have to do this until you get carpal tunnel, you know, because you have to do it um, maybe a thousand times, maybe 5,000 times in order to get that roving melded into the wool. With our felting kit, you set it up and you walk away and you come back and you have this really nice design on your whatever fabric you're using. And as I said, you can, you can do, um, this is um, some cheap felt on a piece of black denim. Um, let me get my other scarf out here. <clears throat> This is again fleece on fleece. It's just a different design, this leaf design. This is white fleece felted into blue fleece. Then on the other side, I took some old blue jeans. So they have, they're different colors of denim. And um, with the felting um, to, uh, kit, you can put in a felting design and not put any, that felt anything into it. The punch will just, um, punch the fibers of the denim and it makes this really soft beautiful design on denim <clears throat> so um, I, I think this is a very attractive warm scarf oh and I didn't show you my design on my vest this hopefully you can see this this is a butterfly of felting fleece into white fleece into black fleece on the back of my vest. And then this little pin, this is a three-dimensional felting project that's in the icon. And this is just regular fleece, I mean, I'm sorry, regular inexpensive felt and some embroidery thread along the, you know, to the center to give it some decorative interest. So you can do these three dimensional projects as well, which that are pretty, pretty cool. And so I'm going to show you how you would go about doing felting. So I'm going to change my camera angle. And the first thing you do is we're going to need to re remove the ankle because we're not going to use this foot. We've got to bring the IDT up and then remove the ankle. And I have really large hands. Getting this small screw out is always a little bit of a chore for me, but because we have this extra space on the icon too, I can at least fit my finger, fingers in there without feeling like I'm scraping them, which is really, really nice. So the next thing we need to take off is the needle because we are not going to use the, we're not going to use thread. We're not going to use a needle. We're going to use, they're called felting needles, but they're more like a punch. They don't have an eye. And in your kit, you have a few different things. You have this platform that needs to go over the feed dogs. And that pops into place like that. If you forget to put the platform on, your design will be very ghosty. So um, it is necessary to have it there. I left it off a couple of times and wondered what the heck I did wrong. And I also forgot that I have to remove the bobbin. Again, we're not using thread, so we have to take the bobbin out. And you have to fool the machine into thinking there is a bobbin by putting this cup in there that comes with the felting kit because it won't want to um, sew without a bobbin in there. So let's put the platform back in place. There are little holes in the stitch plate that it snaps into. Then we have this cup here. Actually, let's put the felting needle in place first. 
and you get a few of them in with the kit. There we go, and they're very tiny compared to our other needles, but they do have the flat side on one side so you know how to stick it into the area up here that holds the needle. And then the last piece is this cup that kind of basically mashes the fibers together so that it, you get that nice end product. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute. <clears throat> so inside of the Icon 2, there is a tutorial that goes over all the steps that I'm doing right now. So you know, if you buy the kit and you wonder how to get it set up, that tutorial is there. And I'm sure there are probably YouTube videos as well. Or you could just, you know, these uh, uh, Facebook Lives that we do are recorded and put up on YouTube after a few days. So you could rewatch this if you wanted to. Okay, so now we're set up for felting. And I'm going to go over to my screen to show you how to find a felting design. So the inside of the Icon 2, there are a number of felting designs. And um, there are also felting designs in the MySonet library. So actually, before I go into the machine, I'll show you what's in the MySonet library. So the, the um, MySonet library, in case you haven't heard of it, is a subscription-based embroidery design library that with a subscription, you have access to over 7,000 designs any day of the, any time of the day, any day of the week, and you just download it and you're off and running. Now, if you don't have the subscription, you can buy individual designs. And in the library, it'll tell you the cost right at the bottom, and you'll see just in a moment when I show you the library um, how to find these felting designs and um, what they look like. So if I'm going to go into the library, I go to my computer and open up my browser and I go to library.mysonet.com. That's the address up at the top. And then if I want to find a felting design, I go and I touch this filter icon. The filter icon was up in the, the search field and I can search by the size of the design, I can search by the number of colors, the stitch count, the size, all sorts of different criteria. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out fabric decorating, the last thing I searched on, and put in felting. Then I go down to the bottom here and touch the check mark, and it's gonna go out and it looks for felting designs. And it found 206 designs in the library that are all felting designs. So I'm just gonna scroll through some of them so you can see them. One of these days, I want to make that angel wing. I don't know what, I haven't decided what I'm going to make with it, but I am going to do that. So here's a whole bunch of these snowflakes. This is where I got my snowflake on my husband's um, scarf. And then you'll see at the bottom of each design, there is a price. So you know, if you wanted to buy an individual um, design, you could do that. I have the subscription. So if I wanted to stitch out one of these designs, I can just... Um, touch the paper airplane, and it will send it right over to my icon. So now on my icon, go back to my camera here, I get a message, do I want to allow the library to send this design? And I click OK. And there's the design on my icon to be stitched out. But we're not going to stitch that design out because that's going to take a while. That's a big design. So I'm going to delete that and also show you where the tutorial is on the uh, icon so that, it, you know, if you wanted to review. So from the home screen, which is the screen that's up when you turn on your machine, if I go to Open Help Center and I go under Techniques and Tutorials, and when you first open it up, you, the first... Um, Categories garment techniques. If I scroll from right to left, I get to embroidery techniques. 
and in there I can find felting embroidery. And by the way, the Icon um, 2 has more types of uh, the new Icon 2, um, uh, the new Creative Icon 2, rather, it's a mouthful, will have more types of embroidery, um, the, the specialized embroidery techniques than uh, any other embroidery machine on the market currently. So, but we're gonna go to felting embroidery and there's three different types of felting you can do. You do the freestanding like my lapel pin. You can felt uh, multiple layers. Say you want to have both blue and green in that design, you can do multiple layers. And by the way, you can um, put, um, use yarn and use all sorts of different colors if you want. And then here's just a, sing a simple single layer design. So that's what I'm gonna click on. And then it will, it will give me this tutorial and it will walk me through doing all the different steps. But I'm not gonna do that because I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna show you how to do this. But what's nice about these tutorials is that after you view the tutorial, if you touch content, it will show you all the designs that are for that particular technique, the single layer felting technique. We have these three designs on the icon. So I'm gonna touch there to load it. So I didn't have to go looking for that design. It was very convenient just to find it there. Now I'm gonna make sure that I have my hoop uh, the right size, that's very large. I'm gonna to go to 120 by 120. And so now I have my cute design there. And when you set up a felting embroidery, I'm gonna get my hoop out here to illustrate. When you're going to do felting, you actually are gonna take your hoop and you're gonna put your fabric in the hoop upside down. So this is actually the wrong side of the fleece. And I see I have some questions here. When will the Icon 2 be available to buy, not pre-order? Um, it should be available to buy in the spring, um, probably around late March, early April. Um, it is a very slick machine um, as an educator. I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but um, you know, we have to design classes for this that machine. So I have one and I love it. <laughs> okay, answer that last one about the Icon 2 if you'd, okay. <laughs> From Meredith, Meredith says, do you wanna answer that question? Yeah, Meredith is one of my assistants who we have three people that are, are um, monitoring your questions uh, because I'm doing all this behind the scenes stuff, switching cameras and, and getting my everything focused and, and trying to talk and teach at the same time all by myself in my sewing room. And they are assisting me in uh, Texas, I think California and Illinois. So they are reading your questions so that I don't have to um, monitor the cameras and teach the class and do all that stuff. You know, I'm a one woman band, but there's a limit to what I can do and uh, make sense as I'm trying to teach. Anyway. Going back to your um, hoop, we've got, when you do um, felting, you put your fabric in upside down. Then you're going to take your, whatever you're gonna felt into the other fabric and lay that on top. So I'm just gonna, I have a very large piece here with that little design, I wouldn't need such a large piece, but in case I was gonna do a, multiple stars on here, I have a piece that will fit right on top of the fleece. And I do not need a, um, I don't put a stabilizer on. I just have my fleece in upside down. Then I'm going to, on the screen, go to embroidery st stitch out so that my arm comes over. And this is a very small little design. I'm gonna show you um, how this works very quickly. And now I'm gonna just, touch the start stop button. Now that little design takes close to 1100 um, punches. So if you didn't have the felting machine in order to do this little or felt felting kit, in order to do this little design, you would have to punch the, the felt 1100 times. So just imagine if you had a large embroidery like the butterfly on my back, 
you know, you would uh, definitely get carpal tunnel. And it's almost done. Spoke a little too soon, but it is pretty close to being done. One more minute. So if anybody has any questions, this would be a good time to ask. Okay, so now let's see if I can get this in the light so that you can see it well. I am a little challenged with, there, there's like this fine line with lighting where too much there's glare and not enough you can't see. So you can kind of see the design there, but this is what the right side looks like. And let's get it in a different camera. So this is what the design looks like on the right side. And this is the wrong side. So what I would do is I would trim very close to the edge of my design. And this white fleece and the blue fleece has become one. You can wash this. It's not going to come apart. It, they're, they're, they've done like a Vulcan mind mill. They are together. So they're not, it's not going to come become separated when, when you launder it. Now, for that scarf, when I did this, um, the big snowflake in the middle, you know, I had it uh, um, hooped upside down so that I could do the snowflake, the big one. But then when I did the little snowflakes, I had to re-hoop it in order to do regular embroidery. So say I wanted to do some of those little um, star, little snowflakes that I have on this, this um, scarf next to this big, uh, to next to this felting, I would trim all this around and I would have to take this out of the hoop and turn it over and use precise positioning to get myself positioned so that I basically would leave this star on the screen. And then after I've rehooped it, I find the center of the star with precise positioning and then I can, I can put all my other stars around it if I want to. But I do have to flip the fleece over to do regular embroidery um, on the right side of the fleece as opposed to doing it on the wrong side of the fleece. And we have a question here. I have an icon and the felting foot and minky and felt and fleece, but haven't tried this yet. Oh, it's a comment. Time to play. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. It's fun. I, like I said, I really love felting fleece on fleece because you could go and you can get a really simple little fleece hoodie that's very boring and you can do like those little snowflakes all around the hood or a row of snowflakes along the bottom, or you could do that on uh, fleece mittens. I mean, it's, if you live in a cold climate like I do, you know, that you probably wear fleece and it's really a quick, easy, to easy way to um, add embellishments. They're nice and soft, just like the fleece in the minky. There is even a fleece alphabet in the library, so you could do um, a person's initial or their name as well. Let's see, we have another question. Um, so somebody says, I love doing this technique. Are you running at full speed? Um, if I'm not, I normally am. I don't see if I'm at full speed. Yeah, I'm at full speed. Um, there's, no, there's no thread to break, so you know, I just go full speed ahead. There's, you know, the only reason I generally will turn down the uh, speed is if I'm using a delicate thread or a delicate fabric. Um, in general, I just use the uh, full speed for the most part, unless, like I said, there's something delicate going on. But fleece on fleece is not delicate. How do you prevent hoop burn when hooping the fleece? Um, well, I don't do it real tight. Um, if you have a, a fleece that burns easily, you um, could use a, a metal hoop. Um, let me grab my metal hoop to show you what I mean. Okay. 
this is what the metal hoops are uh, my go-to for so many things. If you don't have a metal hoop, I always tell my classes, my in-person classes, if you don't have a metal hoop, you want one, and you just don't know you want one. So the metal hoops hold the fabric in place with these really powerful magnets. So there's no, um, the fleece isn't going to get stretched or burned. Um, also, if you, you ever embroider on other delicate things like velvet or um, organza, or if you're doing something like leather or suede, it's not going to mar the leather or suede. So um, if you use, if you do uh, embroidery on a variety of fabrics, having a metal hoop is really essential. And mine's all beat up because it's been used so much. And some of you may know this, the magnets are so powerful, you can use them as a stud finder on your walls. <laughs> I, I, we got a new TV and I need to mount it. And I'm going to take these babies and find out where that stud is because it will find the, the nail in the stud and stick right to it so you know that there's a stud there. So a side benefit. Let's see what else we've got here. Where do you buy additional felting needles? You would go to your local FAF dealer and, and ask them because it is um, you know, a FAF product and they will you know, steer you in the right direction. Right direction. Okay, so let me put this away. And get out a couple other things that I wanted to show you. <clears throat> so going back to the toy angle, and because I have embroidered on these toys, in the software, um, my Sonnet software, there is a wizard called the uh, In the Hoop Wizard, which is, allows you to make a whole bunch of projects that are complete are done completely in the hoop. Well, there's one project category that's called Novelty, and it's basically soft toys. So they are really great for minky and fleece. So I, for instance, I made this little star, and out of uh, fleece. And the um, it's all done in the hoop, and in the software this says shooting star. I just took I just deleted the shooting star out of the design in the in the software and put in my grandson's name, and it has some nice star embroideries on the inside, and uh, it's a very very quick project. Then I um, designed a um, a soft block for him, and I'll show you uh, what the design looks like. Because if you know how to do use the software, you could see right away how I did it. So let me get rid of the design on here. So when I go into my cloud to find my designs, here it is. And I need to make a bigger hoop, otherwise it just looks like craziness. So I use the largest hoop, the 360 by 350 turnable hoop. And in the software, I just created these boxes with a straight stitch. And then inside the boxes, I put the um, some super designs and let me find my stiletto so I can point better on here. Then once you stitch this out, you know, this is a straight stitch in the design. And then when you take it, take it out of the hoop, you, you're going to leave um, a seam allowance. And then you sew this side to this side, this side to that side, this side to that side, that side to that, that side. And then you have basically an open box. And then you um, will sew this, this top on, leaving a little hole to stuff it. And then there's a little bit of um, whip stitching at the end to close the hole. But then you get this nice soft toy with you know different animals on it. And I even, you know, I put his initial on one side. And it, it makes a nice soft toy for them to have in the crib with them. So that's a very quick little project also. Now I wanted to, let's see, we have another question. No, that's good. So I want to do 
Um, one last thing in talking about doing um, stuffed animals and stuffed toys. So with animals, generally, you're going to want to put a, some kind of face on them. And um, with babies, you don't want to use buttons because they could pull the button off and choke on it. I, you know, you want them to be at least like three or four before you even think about something like that. So you want to use um, applique or a, a fill stitch. So for my um, baby Yoda, he has another name. I think it's Gorgu or something like that. But um, I, I don't have Disney Plus. But anyway, we'll call him Baby Yoda. For my baby Yoda, to make his face, I just used applique creator and um, shape creator right on the icon. And I'll show you how I did that. So you can make faces for your um, any animals that you want to create or you know you make with your your fleece. So let's get rid of this design here. Nope, I don't want to go to stitch out. Get rid of that. Delete all designs. Okay. And then I'm going to go back into a smaller hoop so that we don't have that turnable thing in the middle. So let's do 120 by 120 because faces are usually fairly small. And um, to make the eyes, I go into Applique Creator. And Applique Creator supplies you with these different shapes. Um, you know, there's these crazy dingbat shapes, but for faces, I'd go into um, basic. And for the eye, I would put in a, um, a circle. And let's close that so that's out of the way. And I'm going to want to make it smaller than that because I want it to be, um, you know, an eye. And then I'm going to go into um, positioning. So because in positioning, I have these, all those, these red points are what are called control points. So I can make this, um, I can sort of morph the shape by, by uh, moving these red control points. So I'm going to go down here and hit the minus sign. because I want it to be more like an eye shape. Now it's getting a little bit too square. So now I'll go to the second set of control, control points and maybe pull it down a little bit. Now it's making it more of a circle. So let's go to edit. And I want to unlock the sizing function and maybe just pull it down this way. So basically you can play around with these things and get different shapes. That's not what I want. Bring that back up and we'll go back to positioning and play around a little bit more. Let's try these other control points. There, now that's more eye shape to me. Okay, then I'm gonna click okay and bring that up here where an eye would be. Then I'm going to go, I'm going to deselect it by touching outside of the square, go back to applique creator, because that's the outside of his, his eye, I'm going to want to make the um, colored part of the eye. So that I'm just going to make it into a circle. Bring that in there. <clears throat> then Click on OK. I happen to know that there is a, I'm going to deselect it by touching outside of the square. I'm going to go into my stitches, and there is an eyelet that looks like kind of like an iris. No, that's not the stitch I want. Go back here. In your utility menu, the last subcategory, 1.4, there's this eyelet. And I can pull that down and stick that in there. Maybe off to the side, just slightly. <clears throat> now, so I've got one eye. I can go up to my layers here and make sure I have them all selected. Go down to Edit and Copy. So I'll have two eyes. Bring that over there. So 
I could have used different stitches and I, I probably would if I had the time I would play around this satin stitch looks a little bit heavy to me I might use like a bean stitch instead of the satin stitch for the inner part of the eye but you can see how you could play around with it and do that then for the nose I could go in and uh, oh actually we're running out of time here um, so I'll show you the actually the design that I ended up making um, two designs that I made all right on the machine here without the benefit of software. I'm going to go into um, my cloud. So here's the, the design that I made for my baby Yoda. Get rid of that. So isn't that cute? So that's just making circles. And then um, I used uh, the, the circle. I only used part of the circle for the eyebrows and, and the smile. Then there's another one that I made that I haven't stitched out yet. I'm not quite sure. I don't think I'm done with it yet, but let's get rid of superimpose. So let's get rid of the first, first one. Let's just delete it all. That's probably the easiest thing to do. And then reload it. Go back to my cloud. So this is all, this is uh, using the applique creator. These are sewing stitches and these are satin stitches. So putting them together to make a face for a stuffed animal of some kind. So that's um, just a, a fun thing to play around with. With uh, If you don't have the software, you want to make a face for a stuffed animal, you can certainly make the eyes, no problem. You know, the nose might be a little bit, you know, challenging but if you make a little button nose it should it should be fine and uh, the reality is that babies don't care they just want a soft toy to, to gum on so you can do something cute so let's see we've got um a, uh i've got a notice from meredith that she wanted me to let you know that at the very end of today what we're going to do is we're going to have a survey for you so that way we get your input on these Facebook Lives that we've been doing so we can make them, we can tailor them better to meet uh, what you guys would like to, to see and take part in and to learn. So please take a moment after this uh, class to, um, to fill out the, the survey and give us um, your feedback on how you think we're doing with it. And if you have ideas for future classes, because we would like to continue to do this and we want to teach topics that you want to want to know about. So it'll, it'll take like five minutes. It's just a few questions. Now, are there um, any final questions here before um, we wrap things up here? OK, so we um, let's see if there's anything else I wanted to add. Um, there are many things that you can do with Minky. You can <clears throat> make a cotton quilt top and use batting and put a minky back on it so it's nice and soft. You can put a minky border on it. Um, you can make, um, like I said, scarves. You saw the scarves that I made. Um, there's a lot of things you can do with minky. And, you know, we've been using fleece for years and years. So it's, the minky's a little bit more challenging, but not bad. And it's so soft and cuddly. So um, I hope that if you haven't tried to use Minky, that you will pick some up and have some fun with it. So thank you so much for joining me today. And um, I don't remember the next, I am doing another Facebook Live this month, which would be on our page. And uh, we have we have two, I believe it's two every month. And um, also our, our MySonet Facebook Lives as well. And then after the class is over, I will uh, monitor the questions for about a week to see if anybody has questions that I can respond to. And the, the class will, will be recorded and placed on YouTube. So I think it's after the fact, it's usually a little bit easier to find these classes on YouTube than on Facebook. At least I find it easier to do that. Just go to the FAF North America YouTube page and you'll see all of our um, Facebook Lives there. It just takes a couple days before they get put up. So again, thank you for joining us today and happy new year. I hope that everybody um, has a lot of fun sewing and um, is happy and healthy for 2022. So again, thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.